Yo, yo, it's X. What's up? It's 2023. We got a full podcast with the boy Crizzo. What's going on, Crizzo? How you doing, brother? It's the boy Crizzo. You did what I'm saying. We out here. You know, Crizzo really discussing. been everybody. Crizzo really been on his Batman uh era. You know what I'm saying? He's been in the cave working hard down there in down there in Florida. You know what I'm saying? In the keys. He's out there working hard. Let the people know what you've been up to because the people haven't seen you in a while. They saw you on the Distro Lord interview, but let them know what's going on with you, bro. Yeah, man. So a lot's been going on. Uh, still got that personal training thing going for myself. That's been going pretty well. Uh, just kind of focusing on developing like my own brand and thinking about uh, where do I want to envision myself kind of in the future and how I want to structure that. Basically, what I've been doing is kind of structuring um where i want to go and move forward with that uh looking at different platforms how how i can increase my visibility and awareness within those platforms and especially the type of content i want to put out there as well not just fitness but also other forms of self-improvement uh so that's kind of what i've been doing recently uh I know I kind of was like, you know, like X said on my Batman shit. I was here and there and there and here, but uh, I'm going to try to make an effort to be more structured and be more timely with uh, the things that I got going on. So, uh, but yeah, glad to be back. Continually building like your brand too. You're doing a good job, bro. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, and I'm still, I'm still here. But I'm just kind of like a little bit in the shadows working behind what's out uh you know running some of the, the uh, different social media pages as well as working with different companies as well with their social media presence so it's kind of a a juggling act but at the same time it's uh you know you make time for your uh priorities so without a doubt and then uh obviously we got our boy Corey, and then today we got our homie damon how you doing brother i'm doing amazing man uh it's an honor to be here i appreciate y'all for bringing me on Without a doubt, Damon, hey, honestly, let them know where you're from, what you do. You're a young father, man. Let the people know so they can get an idea of who you are before we start. All right, bet. So my name is Damon, uh, a.k.a. Demo Brando, uh, on, on my social handles. So uh, so I'm young, 24, got, a, got an eight-month-old daughter. I am actually a financial advisor, so... Um, I produce life insurance right now, and I'm working on getting my securities license so I can help folks with their investments. Uh, that's something I'm very passionate in, um, as well as helping, you know, talking about money management. Uh, so working on getting a, a business built up in that aspect takes some time, but uh, definitely getting to that. Uh, I would like to say self-proclaimed, I'm the best investor of our generation. So, so that's going to that's gonna come to light. So you the new uh you knew Warren Buffett, it sound like. Oh yeah, man. What? <laughs> Wait on it. Wait on it. <laughs> Without a doubt, and then obviously Corey I already mentioned it to the folks, but Corey, I gotta give you some time. You got anything you want to say to the people? Well, not too much. We're just uh still going steady with life. Got uh just swapped over from uh the middle school or rowing to high school rowing, coaching high school rowing. Got back into uh, just finish up winter season, and uh, that was the first uh, time I actually got some uh, fitness in since um, COVID. So I'm just happy to be here, happy to be still pushing through, and yeah. Without a doubt, it looks like we got a little a little extra special guest here. How you doing, youngster? <laughs> <laughs> type deal. Uh, but yo, man, uh, Chris, oh man, what you got in mind for today? What you want to talk about? What's on your mind? Well, a lot's been going on as far as like the stock market goes and just the economy in general. Uh, inflation has been going up high, like how I predicted. Uh, not just only me, right? I don't want to, you know, you know, pull my own tail or whatever, but uh, a lot of other financial, uh, aware people kind of uh knew that this was going to come inflation is going up and um you know just basically just keeping up with the market how you can uh prepare and how you can um ultimately profit from 
the market going up as well, right? Because it seems how uh, inflation keeps going up, but wages and um, other things like that are slowly catching up. So, you know, right now the name of the game is to make more money than inflation is increasing. So, so do you think that a uh, hyperinflation is is really going on right now? I could see it on like certain things, like you see the groceries, obviously gas. Everyone talks about that, but do you think that that is going to be a continuing pattern? Obviously, you're not a right, you're not a financial guru, you expert that's going to know what the trends are exactly, but you can kind of get an idea of it just from a consumer point of view, right? Yeah, so uh, I wouldn't say hyperinflation right now because hyperinflation would be really obvious and uh, it would be like a huge difference than what we see now. Right now, we're just kind of seeing like the bit ripples effects and like the beginning effects of inflation. Um, but as far as hyperinflation, we haven't seen that quite yet. Uh, will that happen? Um, I think yes, maybe in like two, three years, maybe. Um, I don't want to give any promises or, or predictions, right? You know, I always say I know a little bit about a lot. So I'm not an expert, but at the same time, I'm pretty, you know, uh, well-versed within uh, certain fields, right? And uh, this being one of the, so um, I don't, so, so, as far as inflation goes, they always make it seem like it's not as bad as it really is. So, you know, last time I checked, it was like uh, 7% when really it was 9%. You know what I mean? So uh, the Fed always, and, and it makes sense too at the same time, because they don't want to create, uh, you know, uh, hysteria within the public. Like, oh, you know, we got to buy all the toilet paper you know, we got to buy all the eggs or whatever. Like, they don't want to make it seem that it's so bad that they can't handle it. But at the same time, they um, make it too good to be true. To it's like, oh, don't worry. We got everything under control. Um, you don't have to worry about anything, things of that nature. So at one aspect, I do understand how they are kind of like, you know, making the public more calm, which makes sense. You don't want people to go crazy. But at the same time, they're not really that realistic as far as like the numbers go with inflation and if they can really uh, handle it. In my opinion, I think they're just kicking the can down the road. Uh, where that can might lead to, I don't know. Uh, that's up to speculation. But, yeah, the, you know, those are my general thoughts on that. And have you seen it just, I guess, so I did ask about hyperinflation, but in terms of just inflation in general, have you seen a difference within your spending, within what you budget for the, the costs that are, are the costs showing any effect to you at all? I mean, you know me, man, I don't look at the numbers when I put together, I just put the no, I'm plan, but, um, <laughs> um, I mean, to the average person, I would say, yeah, but to be honest, I just, when I go to the grocery store, I just buy whatever I need. I don't really, like, do, like, a weekly thing at the grocery store. It's like, if, I, if I'm missing something, I just go for, like, a sh grocery run. And also, too, it's important, too, like, here's a grocery tip. Don't go when you're hungry. Go when you already ate or when you're not hungry, because a lot of times people go to the grocery store, and when they're hungry, and they see things... I was like, oh, let me grab this. Let me grab this. And I was just observing, right? And um, when I was going to the grocery store, like in, like in the lines, they have like cookies set perfectly right in the beginning of the line section. And I'm just like walking past it. It's like they want you to run into the, like the cookies. I'm like, shouldn't the cookies be at the bakery aisle? But no, they're like, actually like, next time I go there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a picture and I'm gonna send it to y'all. But it's just like, like stacked next to the line i'm just like hmm you know that that's really interesting you know why is that the case it's because they want people to you know uh i forgot the term but you know buy buy with their eyes and not with their brain you know or buy with their stomach yeah so, i mean they even say that grocery stores are uh like that's how they're kind of configured is is for that for impulse buying to make yeah, you yeah. Yep. 
to Pokemon. make you yeah exactly. to make you just think oh i need to get that oh, oh they got some new cereal oh let me cop that right like it's meant for that uh cory in terms of your like day-to-day in columbus in general have you have you seen costs go up from like just last year alone a hundred percent and i just want to go off of what you're just saying about the the grocery stores it's definitely a thing uh you know things aren't just placed uh randomly they especially if you go to like a uh, big corporate places like target they're going to have everything placed in a specific way and like i know for example like the sugary cereals are going to be at kid height you won't see any sugary cereals on the top shelf you can go ahead and check the cereal aisle for yourself for that one um but i know like my bar we uh we just up the prices on beer so that's one big thing i've seen obviously gas prices and uh yeah i definitely see like a uh increase and then Damon, how about for you man have you seen it and and w- what state are you in i'm in north carolina i'm in charlotte and have you seen a have you seen a drastic difference from from just last year oh almost oh, definitely um so right now like my living situation to me my wife my sister, we all came together, so everything's a lot less expensive. Our most expensive bill outside of, like, you know, a normal house and, uh, like, rent, utilities and stuff is the food. It's like every time we go in the grocery store, we just go and get what we need, right? It's a lot of us, but it still ends up being, like, at a minimum $100. Right. Every group. You know what I'm saying? So we're, we're definitely feeling it. Um, Last year, my wife and I, we, we mm. stayed by ourselves. And uh, we use this kit called, uh, what was it called? It's not HelloFresh, but the brand is owned by HelloFresh. Okay. Right? And so it would be those meal kits. That was actually less expensive than the grocery store for us. But because there's so many of us in one household now, um, it's not as feasible for us to do that. I feel that. I feel that. Um, so I, 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 from the majority of us, I guess that the, the thing is, is yes, the rent, uh, things are going up down here in Texas. Rent's going up. I think that's just based off of people, you know, moving down here. Uh, but I also think that is part of inflation. Gas is still crazy. Groceries is probably the biggest thing I've seen uh, in, within a year. So, um, yeah, man, uh, everyone's feeling it. So with that being said, man, you know, we saw the FTX scandal in December right and then now we've got this new one the uh silicon valley bank just collapsed on friday what does that mean for like us like anybody got any any opinions on it uh yeah he's a little bit in and out um that thing was really uh shocking to me when i seen that i was at first i was like what and um kind of did you know kind of dug in a little bit see what was see what was going on and um <clears throat> honestly i mean i'm not really surprised at the same time uh that bank is mainly for uh silicon valley uh startups so it's it's a high risk um investment so that i mean you know that in and of itself is really um you know weary i would say but uh you know i feel like uh, I, you know I, I don't know exactly what happened um but maybe demar can uh you know touch a little bit about that and what happened and everything yeah so uh silicon valley bank uh like you said they were mainly they were in the niche market so they were mainly for tech startups so to give everybody like the tldr of everything and it's not too complicated um silicon valley they they were actually um a pretty decent bank um like they weren't doing anything crazy with the money um where they where they failed at is that they locked a lot of their money up in bonds right so what a lot of banks do instead of sitting on cash they'll invest in um they'll invest the money they want to put in somewhere safe so they had four-year bonds but they bought the bonds before they um, before the Fed started increasing interest rates. So when they increased the interest rates, it lowered the value of the bonds um, and it messed with the balance sheet. So the balance sheet shows how much, how many assets, how many liabilities, how much debt a company has. And so um, a lot of big investors, I think venture capitalists, they were like, go ahead, go, go pull all your money out. 
because they balance sheet looking funny. And so um, because everybody wanted to go pull all their money out at once, um, the bank didn't have all the money to give everybody because a lot of their money is um, locked up in these bonds and the bonds are four year bonds. So they can't get the money for another couple of years unless they raise money. Mm-hmm. now can they can they sell the bonds or can they can so i know that it's it's held up for like four years uh in any way is there any way for them to just sell the bonds and try to get as much value out of it to to get liquid you know um that i honestly i don't fully know i think you have to wait until maturity okay. so um i believe it's locked up but i'm not 100 percent on that uh for okay. certain but even if they did the bonds um they went down in value because of the interest rates so they wouldn't even have all the money still to give out back to everybody right and uh weren't they expecting the federal reserve to change the interest rate like at the beginning of the year like weren't they expecting it? i don't know if it's like uh lowered or if, if it's raised or what but wasn't it supposed to change at some point like this year um so hang on one second you're good Wait. All right, so I can't tell you what they were thinking in that bank, but um, I imagine that they bought the bonds like somewhere around 2020, 2021, right? So at the time, the Federal Reserve was saying that inflation wouldn't be a problem and that it was transitory, meaning that easy fix, you know, band-aids, stuff on the wrist. They printed a whole bunch of money. It isn't going to mean anything, right? Um. And so if they were listening to that, then they're not worried about interest rates going up at the time. The reason why interest rates are going up now is to fix inflation that they said wasn't going to happen. You know, so they kind of got caught up in the mix. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris, any, any thoughts on that? Or Corey, any thoughts on that? Well, uh, <clears throat> one thing that I heard was that they didn't like have uh like a security for the interest risk is that like correct like they didn't have like anything uh as most banks do have something in case like something like this happens that i didn't hear anything about so um only thing that i know of like the fdic um, like they them covering up to two hundred fifty thousand. Now, as far as like any other internal work, I wouldn't have anything. I wouldn't know anything about that. And uh, the FDIC, the that uh, twenty five uh, or two hundred fifty fifty k that isn't that for just an individual that that's like a member of the bank, like they're protected up to that, right? Yeah. So, um, I said that's for for anybody that's using that's using the bank, right? So business individuals alike. Uh, like I said, the the positives for it, which isn't really a positive, that bank was mostly used for for startup companies. So I don't think they had too many like you know uh, people like us using their bank. Um, so uh, and then most of them like they had way over they they having like millions of dollars in there, right? So they could have been smarter with spreading out their money. You know, and knowing that as well, there's a lot of pieces to connect to that. But, um, so what was your original question? Let, let me not go too far off of that. Corey was just wondering if they had some type of reserve to back uh, the lost funds, right? So, like, yeah, they can't get everybody's money back, but, you know, certain bank, most banks, and those are usually bigger banks, right? have some type of reserve that they are like, okay, well, we got this. You know what I'm saying? Well, well. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think, like I said, they they had the reserve, but most it was it was 56% of their reserve money was in the bonds. And that's right. why they couldn't pay everybody out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think that uh, especially, I know, like, you know, so venture capitalists, like, they probably just throw money at the entrepreneurs and just keep it in this little bank here. Not little, but, you know, keep it in here and then you can disperse the funds any way you want and you you deal with it afterwards. So that's when you see the video of all those like guys outside of the building trying to get their funds and that's to help, 
build that's the help startups and it might even be to help fund you know little projects for the bigger corporations like google or facebook or meta or anything like that so it's going to be really interesting to see the ramifications of this bank falling and what what happens to uh, the tech world and what happens to innovation in the tech world and you know you'd hope that you can learn from this the economy is getting a little weird so i hope that this isn't a sign for more to come but all you can say is like yo you got to you got to learn from this one honestly mm-hmm, most definitely um so today the Federal Reserve, they're actually, they're, they're guaranteeing all those companies back their money. So okay. that was some good news from her today. Um, I think everybody's going to be on their heels, though, um, from this point going forward. You know what I'm saying? So, Damon, what, what advice would you give to just an individual in terms of, like, saving money? and ter- like, like, almost like a, fi- like, where should they find financial literacy? What what advice do you have for those for, for, for just individuals? So from a from a broad like like regular money management perspective, right? Um you can go seek out a financial advisor near you. You know what I'm saying? So um it depends on what you need, because there's financial advice on just like on saving money, you know what I'm saying? There's financial advice on on saving for retirement, you know, life insurance, investment, and stuff like that. Um, if I had to give like what I do personally, uh, and I talked to Chris about this uh, recently, so I keep a certain amount in just a regular savings banking account, you know, we'll call that the emergency fund. Um, but I would, I'd really sit down and define what an emergency looks like for you as an individual and base that amount on that because. Uh, the banks aren't really giving you the best interest rates. You know what right. I'm saying? Um, and so this is where I prefer to invest, right? And so where even in a high yield savings account like Ally, or there's another mobile bank that I use called Varo, right? Those are giving about 3%. I put it in the stock market. On average, I'll get about 10% a year plus dividends, right? And then I invest in individual companies, which takes a little bit more skill, right? I, I can get more than the 10%. So um, I would say define what an emergency is and know how much you need and a liquid savings for that. Uh, keep your expenses low. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't don't be the person that upgrades your iPhone every year and you don't need to. Like, pay it off, lower your bill. You can pay off your phone and your bill go from like over 100 to about 50 something dollars. That's a lot of Over the long run, that is a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, cars, you know, get something that you can. That is a lot. Cars as well. Like you don't have to have the nicest car. Know what you need. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then invest, invest the rest in smart investments. Don't treat the stock market like lottery tickets. And 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 with the car part, make sure it's a reliable car. Yes, get and, you a Toyota Honda and take care of it. <laughs> and take care of it without a doubt. Yeah. Um, what do you know anything about ULI? Universal life insurance. Yeah, so um who so universal life insurance will go under the um will go under the um whole life insurance category. All right. Um and depending on which company you go through, all right, the, the policy is gonna look different. Uh I personally I have term insurance, I have five hundred twenty-five thousand total between me and my wife and my daughter. So I I choose term, I prefer term because it's cheaper over the long run. Like for me, 250,000 on me at this age is like like $20 a month. Okay. So if I get that same amount in whole life, I'm paying well over a hundred. Right. Uh, um, and so those like, they build a cash value that you can use. Um, but a lot of times like the cons with that is that it takes a couple years for that cash for you to access that cash. So the extra money that I'm using, I personally would prefer to invest it and I can touch right. it whenever I want. And then um, usually you'll get an interest rate or a dividend. Um, I know how to earn higher than that. So for me, it's not, it's not worth it for me personally. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it all depends. I won't say, cause there's people out here that'll say whole life policies, 
universal life policies are scams. I don't believe that. I think it just depends on you and your situation. Very dope. Very dope. Um, Crizzo, anything? Uh, I mean, I mean, there's a couple questions I want to ask. Um, so the first one, uh, when I was talking to DeMond the other day about like investments, I kind of gave him like my formula about it. And he kind of is low key, like my financial advisor. Like I'm in a whole, uh, like, and I talk to him weekly about certain things. Uh, I'm in a, um, damn, uh, a telegram, uh, with him. He, you know, he always giving out the sauce. He's always, uh, giving out, uh, good information, stuff like that. And it's kind of like a collaborative effort, right? You know, you never want to kind of have, you know, and this goes with like anything too, right? When it comes to having a lawyer, financial advisor, uh, anybody who helps you out with anything in life, it should be more of a collaboration than a valuation. You know, they should evaluate you, but at the same time, it's more like collab. It's like, okay, so 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 don't be a yes man to your lawyer. Don't be a yes man to your financial advisor, but understand that they have more knowledge than you, but ask questions though, right? That's how, you know what I'm saying? That's how you uh, grow not only yourself as an individual, but also the things that you're actually trying to work on, right? Yeah, and preferably who, who you want to be the preferably you want to be the most ignorant man right in the room right you, so that you're learning from everybody else you don't you're not like you don't want to act as if like uh you don't you don't want to act as if you know everything you want to be able to be in that room it's, it's kind of like that whole thing the 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 five friends that you, you the the top five people that you surround yourself that's probably what you're gonna end up being um be with people who know what they're doing like invest in just like what you're saying, collaboration is is very important, man. It's not just, oh, I know everything. Now I, I'm too proud to to learn something new. So I'll totally agree with you, bro. Yeah, you want to be able to be confident like you know everything, but act like you don't know nothing, right? So be confident in yourself, you know, that, that you're able to conduct yourself and be in, in the same room as those kind of people, but at the same time be a student. Right. You got to be able to be a student of, of those people around you. Don't let your ego to, you know, take control of you because you can learn anything from anybody. Right. It's not only things of what to do, but also learn what not to do. Right. You know, if, if I'm walking down the street and I see a homeless person, you can learn a lot from from a homeless person. If you sit down, and you talk to them it, it may not be you know something to do, but what to not to do. You see what I'm saying? So you can all like in life, there's always many lessons that's always around you. You just have to prick your ears and listen to it. So what I was saying, uh, when it comes to, you know, a lawyer or financial advisor or whatever, ask questions. Right. So, like, what do you think I should do with, you know, this stock, you know, this portfolio? Should I, you know, put this <clears throat> money into real estate? Should I put it into stock market? Should I put it into this? And whatever uh, feedback that they give you, don't just be like, all right, you know, let's do it. Be like, can you explain to me why you think this is the best choice? And be like, well, what do you think about this option if I go ahead and I do this? Or if I go ahead and I do this and I do that and see what they say. It should be a collaborative effort when it comes to things like that. Same thing when it comes to investments. Same thing when it comes to uh you know a workout program anything right you know don't you know don't just think that oh i know everything because uh that's probably the most ignorant thing that you can say right somebody who says they don't need to be taught is the person who needs to be taught the most <laughs> you know what i'm saying so um yeah that's kind of my thoughts as far as uh as far as that goes Corey, do you have any questions on just financial literacy while well, you got demon here like Use them as a resource. You got anything you you want to ask? Well, first I want to say I completely agree with you, Krizo. Um, but uh, I was curious. I was going to ask, um, what led you to um, to this importance of having this financial literacy in your life? Was this like was your family very uh, financial financially literate, or was this something that you came onto your own? Was it someone? who you met, who uh, enforced this on you? Where did this come from?
You guys see him, you guys see him right? Yeah, yeah, did you hear me? Uh, oh, my bad. I thought you was asking uh, Crizzo. So, what? what? And actually, Crizzo can ask, answer that after you. Go ahead. Okay, but so what got me into financial literacy was I had, I done been through some things like in my childhood, you know what I'm saying? Like going and going a couple of days without the water being on, without lights, you know what I'm saying? Just going through, going through some financially trauma, um, traumatic things or, you know, I didn't see my parents like have to steal food out the grocery store to feed me and my siblings, but, you know, amongst, amongst other things. You know what I'm saying? So once I got to a certain age in my teenage years, around between 16, 17, like I was like, all right, my parents can't teach me about money. Like they can teach me some things, but we're continuously they got better over time, but it still wasn't. You know, I knew that we were still trapped in like a box. You know what I'm saying? And there are some things that they needed to learn. And so I was like, all right, well. I got on YouTube. YouTube was like my favorite escape at the time. I was like, I need to start learning about money. All right. So I, I looked up like, how does money work? And um, there's this YouTuber. His name is Jaspreet Singh, a minority mindset. Right. That's his channel. I came across his channel first and his videos. Like he started talking about the stock market and how, how money works, how banks work, how, how inflation works. So at the age of like 17, 18, I'm like, okay, ain't nobody ever taught me about this. You know what I'm saying? And um, it led me to buying my first um, stock and ETF on my birthday as soon as I turned 18, you know? And then from there, like, you know, I'm, I'm transitioning into adulthood. Now I'm seeing like why things were so hard, you know? And I made, I still made a whole lot of mistakes because I started making my own money and I was blowing it. You know, and so I fell into the traps that I learned about firsthand. So um, recently over the past two, three years, like um, I really I was like, I need to really buckle down because I got this information. So let me start putting it into action. Let me start getting consistent. You know, I got a lot of I got a lot of siblings, family that um, that look up to me and whose lives I want to change. So. Let me learn this so that way they can always live abundantly. So that's what that's what led me here. That's great. And uh so you're speaking on stocks. Um what what uh what's the application you use to uh purchase stocks? Because I know especially for uh younger uh young adults, they might be enticed to use the these apps that are popular like I don't know, like Robin Hood or this and that, which are not really the best uh, ways of going about that. What do you use? So I started off um, my first stock brokerage. It was called Stash. They charged like a dollar a month fees and they weren't bad. They were very like beginner friendly. They had a lot of their thing was mainly ETFs, right? Which makes investing safer because an ETF like instead of you having to pick an individual stock and that's swinging up and down, you'll group like 10 plus stocks into one basket. So if one isn't performing well, the other ones hold you up. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that was good. But um, with the with the fee, it didn't feel worth it, especially once I got a better, um, a greater scope of knowledge on it. So right now I'm using public.com, um, using public.com and uh, TD Ameritrade. That's what I do. And then I also have a Webull account, but that's for trading, like options trading. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll go ahead and let Crizzo answer the financial freedom question. Well, what would uh, encourage you to be on that path? Uh, I mean, what would not encourage me to be on that path is the real question. That's true. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh since I was, well, you know, I had a similar story with the mom, uh, family mm -hmm. struggling, both parents being, you know, immigrants, not from America, coming here, land of opportunity, whatever, and just trying to make their own way. Um, I've seen both of them struggle. The main arguments in the household would mainly be centered around money. Uh, nine times out of 10 would be centered around money. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to be in a position to where money would never be an issue for me and my family. 
And in order for me to do that, you have to understand it. And um, school, I knew, I knew that school was never going to teach me uh, those kind of lessons, right? I have to go outside of the system, the uh, safety net of school. And it's kind of like a safety net that's kind of have tears under it because it's not really safety. It's really just uh, keeping you afloat. Um, so, and I got a question on that in a second, Chris. I'll, I'll let you finish. But yeah, so um, I knew that wasn't going to be the case. So, which is unfortunate, but I had I knew that I had to uh, kind of do my own digging when it comes to you know learning about money, uh, how to manage money, you know how to grow money things of that nature, right? How they get money. Uh, So, you know, like the school system is not going to help you. And, um, you know, don't, and one thing too I would say is that um, don't be discouraged by all these people who claim to have money or flaws, you know, who, who, who spread their money or, you know, whatever, nine times out of 10, um, it's not what the reality is. A lot of people, they buy all these fancy cars, but they're making $900 payments on it when they can use that those $900 to reinvest it into the stock market, how, you know, real estate, crypto, um, a business, you know, precious metals, whatever the case may be that, you know, that has value. Because uh, with a car, you know, you buy it and depreciation is up here. You drive it off the lot and then depreciation goes down. So as you pay in monthly, depreciation goes down and you're going to be paying more than the car is actually worth. So that is... is um, On top of the repairs, is, on top of everything else too that takes... Yeah, car, exactly. Yeah. In, in, on top of insurance, on top of gas, on top of maintenance. repairs, yeah. and maintenance, everything. So... um. You know, just like Jay-Z said, if you can't buy it twice, you can't afford it. So for me, uh, you know, I have a car, but I, I bought it in, in cash for, you know, myself, a reliable vehicle, too. And uh, I'm cool with it, right? I have nobody to impress. A lot of people, they buy cars to impress people that they don't even know. All right. It sounds crazy, but it's true. And it's because we live in a culture that's always trying to impress the person next to you, Right keeping up with the Joneses. Oh, my, you know, my, my manager got a BMW. I got to go get a Mercedes. You know, this person got that. I got to go get the, you know, so it's just like you're competing with something, but it's always going to be outdated. You know, there's always going to be a 2024 model, 2025 model, a new iPhone, a new this, a new this. So you're just keeping up with father time, but father time always wins. So, um, it's always just thinking outside of the box. That's kind of how the uh, matrix keeps you caged in is by consumerism, right? Materialism and consumerism. That's how they keep you caged in with, you know, things like that. So, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much my thoughts on that. I feel that. I feel that. Uh, I was going to say is, uh, for school, and, and this is for you, Crizo. Uh, I feel like me and you are, are similar, and I had a conversation with someone uh, a few weeks ago, and f- f- I think me and you, we don't fit that mode of a school person. Like, oh, I need to go, I need to go to college, blah blah blah. Like, I feel like we definitely could have found our way. It probably would have taken a little longer, right? But we would have probably found our way regardless of what we wanted to do. Um, how, how do you feel about that? Do you feel that like? school wasn't necessarily like needed um so every time i ask this question i'm always like 50 50 on it yeah Uh, so as far as college goes um that number one con i would definitely say is the loan aspect of it where i have like forty thousand dollars in in student loan debt which eats away out out of my bank account every month but you know that's that's the reality of it and the problem is, is that, you know, there's no job that's guaranteed, right? 
uh, the demand for jobs isn't as high as the, as the supply of jobs. I mean, uh, yeah, as, as the supply. So there's thousands and, and hundreds of people graduating every year, but only a select few gets, uh, you know, selected by those uh, particular employers. So you're kind of like, you know, feeding scrap or kind of hunting for scraps amongst, you know, uh, a sea of, of other students from different schools. And you kind of have to like sell yourself to those potential employers. So uh, the money is not worth it as far as that goes, because there's no guarantee employment after college. If there was a guarantee employment, if, if there was a system that was just like, OK, um, you don't have to pay us until you get hired full time as a, you know, from your degree. That would make that would make more sense. I would be like, OK, yeah, then I would, you know, consider taking on a loan because then it's just like okay well once I get uh hired then I can actually pay pay it back um so you know that's kind of that but at the same time number one if I didn't go to school I never would have met you I never would have uh you know met Corey and 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 all those dominoes of networking so that's a big plus is networking right you do meet a lot of people who are in a similar life path as you who have a similar mindset as you you know not not the majority but you do meet those select few people who do actually um have that kind of mindset as you so definitely the networking aspect is the number one and plus you learn too like you know even though the education system is a little bit outdated you still learn like like i said you learn from from everybody there's a lot of professors that I went to school with that I learned a lot from, you know, shout out to Dr. Demps, you know, you know, he's real. If he's watching this, but... real man. Yeah, for real, for real. Exactly. So, um, I, you know, I developed myself even more as a person from when I when, uh, first started JU from when I exited out JU. So not to say plus, the same too. I have, I got to say the same. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So it's a little bit of give and take a little bit of sacrifice and, and give um so honestly it just uh depends on you right and what type of degree that you're trying to get at and how focused are you because ultimately college is really what you make it um you know if you go out and you party every single weekend and you you know chase girls and all this and top you know type of stuff and you graduate, you complain that, oh, I can't find no job. I can't get hired. It's like, well, what were you doing in university? You wasn't really doing nothing besides going to class or partying every time. So, you know, that makes sense, right? But if you did your due diligence and you had internships, you collaborated with other people, you created projects, you know, like you went out and tried to, you know, provide as much value to uh, the campus as much as possible, then like the universe is only going to reward you because, you know, that's the law of the universe cause and effect, right? You know, I caused this to happen. So ultimately this sh should be the effect of it. So ultimately it is what you make it. Although uh, the uh, debt is really unproportional to the average income, right? You know, the, the you know, the uh, debt ceiling is a lot higher than, income right the you know, the prices of university has increased and you know uh wages has kind of stagnated or only decreased by a little so wages aren't really uh keeping up with the college um loan which is unfortunate which probably would be like my main issue with that so and uh cory and demont would you guys consider yourself like school are you guys like it was is school was school for you guys that is a great question um i feel like we're still in school yeah yeah i know yeah. And, and i'm still like wondering that myself i mean i don't know what i would be doing if i wasn't in school that's one thing i probably wouldn't be uh because i have a I have a habit of not staying on track of things. And, uh, you know, if you're in school, you have an agenda, you have uh, a list of things you got to do. So that helps me. 
uh, you know, provide work. But at the same time, uh, this, I mean, this is going back in high school, but especially in high school, uh, I would like do the least to uh, be like, you know, like B student, you know, when it could have been an A student or this and that or the other. So um, I'm trying to think of like, if I consider myself someone who needed school, because I, I feel like I can't say either or, because without school, I don't know where the heck I would be, you know, probably nowhere good. But at the same time, in uh, previous um, years, I don't think I 100% applied myself or, you know, use it to the best advantage, I guess. I feel like I was just uh, coasting through. There we go. That's the word, coasting through. So I feel like it's kind of either or. And Demond, how about you, bro? I got you. So um, I actually, I dropped out my sophomore year of college. I didn't even start it. Um, so school, it really depends on the person. All right. Um, Where'd you go? Went, Where'd you go? I went to UNC Charlotte. Okay. Yeah. So um, it really depends on the person and what kind of degree you're going after. Right. Like if you want to be a lawyer, doctor, anything like that, you're you're going to need school. Right. But those are for the people that know that for a fact. If you're going in undeclared, you don't know what you want to do. Right. That's that's a waste of money right there. All right. Or psychology was real popular here. You know what I'm saying? But if you go into school for psychology, then, you know, know what kind of job, like know what your end goal is. You know what I'm saying? Like to be a, to be a psychologist, psychiatrist, it takes even more school after just your bachelor's to even go and get that job. And some people just like, Oh, psychology is cool. And it is, it's dope. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was in social psychology, you know, but it didn't do anything for me, you know? So I mean, taking taking worthwhile courses, I'd say that's the that's the number one thing with school. You know, it all depends. For me, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I knew I didn't work. I didn't. I knew I did not want to work for anybody, so um, school wasn't worth it for me. And luckily, I was able to get out before I got into any debt. You know what I'm saying? That's another thing. Like these are kids coming right out of coming right out of high school. They don't know the value of a do- um of a dollar. You know what I'm right. saying? They don't know what it is to have that that heavy burden over their head and then have to pay for it later. You know, one of my homies, um, his mom was in her 40s still paying off student loan debt. Like, oh, that's a lot. You signed up for that when you were 18. That's a long time. You know, so there's a lot of things to consider um, when determining if school is for you or not. For me, it wasn't worth it. I was able to become a financial advisor without school. And can you walk us through that? Because that, that's really cool. And then you were able to to be like, you, I assume you don't work for anybody, right? Or you work for yourself? Pretty much. Yeah. So so tell us, how, how did that work? How, how did that work for some people are looking for avenues like that? Gotcha. So um, what I do now, I'm a financial advisor through this company called Primerica. Right. So um, last year. Um, and then up and up until last year, right, I was just working different jobs and making sure I made money to pay my bills and just going through the school of life. I was going through life university. You feel me? And um, the last job I was at, okay, second to last job I was at before becoming a financial advisor, I was selling cars. I was at a Honda dealership and um, I was really getting good with like with investing and and like understanding like what makes a good company versus a bad company da, 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 and money management. And I'd be in there every day uh, looking for customers and selling cars. And I was like, damn, I'm really, I'm really fucking these people over. And that's not what I want to do. I want to help people with money, not, not do the opposite. So I started feeling very unfulfilled. Uh, what really like tipped me over that iceberg. I had this family that was in a similar situation as me. Like I was working. And then um, my wife would stay at home with the baby. And uh, the dad worked at Amazon or something like that. Uh, and they just, they're barely making it through. They wanted a minivan. And 
the minivan ended up costing them 900 something a month right i'm like bro it's more than my that's more than what i pay for rent on top of everything else and you got two kids you got a family and you're the only one working that didn't make sense to me like I, i have to bring them these papers and i know what games like my managers are playing too you know what i'm saying uh just side note quick tip you go to buy a car don't ever sign on that first paper they bring you they they call it checking your temperature. They're gonna put some outrageous numbers on there, right? Or you might not know what your interest rate is. But anyway, so from there I was like, yeah, let me find out how I can become a financial advisor. So long story short, I was quiet quitting there. Ended up getting fired. Quiet um quiet quitting, and then I went to um to this old Greek restaurant I had worked out before when I was like eighteen, nineteen, and uh came across Primerica. And I didn't have to have any bachelors, no, no, anything like that. So um signed up and I met somebody through um this other Discord I'm in. It's called uh well, this other community I'm in called Travers Anonymous through Wall Street Travers. So uh met him there and he um did a financial needs analysis with me and he referred me to the company. And all I had to do, I did a um it's called an independent independent business um application. So um, it's like I'm partnered with them. Like I'm I'm my own business with them. So I don't clock in. I don't really report to anybody unless like I'm signing a um signing a client up for some life insurance. And then um what I had to do was I had to learn everything, um, life insurance, term life, whole life. They only do term life there. Um, and I had to go take this exam. Um and that was it so like there's there's opportunities out there where all you have to do is learn the material and they pay for the exam too so you learn the material and you go out here and you do your thing um and that's it so even with the securities license once i get to promote it there just learn the content go take my test get my license very dope very dope um you guys, this has been an amazing podcast. Damon, we're going to have you on without a doubt <clears throat> later on in, in the in the, in the the future because you should definitely, there's definitely going to be more things to talk about on the finance side. We can also just chat about other things too as well. But uh, you guys got anything, any last things, any last things you guys want to bring up, any topics you guys want to talk about? It's really up to, the, the floor is up to you guys. Yeah, I got a quick one. I was just curious, uh, you know, we... Uh, I'm sure you know what not and what uh, what you can and can't uh, buy, what you should and shouldn't buy, all that. What's some of your financial vices that you still kind of uh, have a habit of getting into, if there are any? Uh, good question. Uh, that was a question for me, right? It's for uh, any of you guys. Okay, cool. Uh, shit, man. Uh I'm addicted to buying stocks. So sometimes I, I put a little bit too much in there. Uh, there's been a couple of times I'm like, oh, fuck, I didn't I didn't invest in five hundred dollars. I need to come up with like two. I need to go do Instacart or something so I, <laughs> so I can cover this bill. You know what I'm saying? Outside of that food, man, like spending, spending too much money on food. That that's probably about the hardest thing. Like for me personally, like when it comes down to material things, um, I'm pretty good with that. I don't, there's not too many things like that I want to buy. Like, I, I'll get excited about buying a book or buying, I just bought a five subject notebook yesterday and some pens. It felt like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, definitely spending too much money on food still here and there. Um, and then uh, maybe, maybe certain, so I only have Netflix and Hulu. That's it for subscriptions though. That's that's about it for me. I'd say um, my advice has to be that 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 takes up the most money. I'd say it has to be steak and salmon. Can't <laughs> lie, can't lie, man. Yeah, for me, definitely um, weed and strippers for sure. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, no, definitely. Uh, I would I would agree. Similar to me, it would be food, uh, food, cause you know, 
I love food, man. What can I say, bro? But I stay in the gym. So if you stay in the gym, you're consistent with it. You can put that as an excuse. Like, man, this is my cheat meal. Just don't, just don't turn it into a cheat week or else, you, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have a problem. But, yeah, so food, um, I don't have no uh, subscriptions. I have Verizon through my phone. I have, like, the best plan. So Apple Music and Netflix is free. So so that's cool. That's covered. Um, still plugging Verizon. Hey, shout out. Shout out. <laughs> you feel shout me? Out. I'm still, <laughs> still repping. But, um uh let's see food materialism things i'm pretty cool um you know what i'm saying i wouldn't mind having you know a new white t- but uh, honestly this is what i wear i'll be wearing white t-shirts black t-shirts gray t-shirts like i like i'm a simple person like even when I, when i become like a millionaire not if right word selection when I become a millionaire i'm still gonna be rocking you know white tees you know simple jeans whatever you know, you know, stuff like that. Uh, of course, it's gonna be nice material, but materialistic things, you know, they come and they go. You know, I'd rather have a nice antique car that nobody got versus a brand new car that's gonna be updated the next next year. You know what I'm saying? Um, same thing as shoes. You know, I sold a bunch of my shoes. Right now, I just have some white and black Converse for working out a pair of running shoes and two Air Forces, a white and a black Air Force. That's it. You know, I don't really go too crazy with it. Uh, I used to have been a really big sneakerhead for sure, but, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really impress me. What impresses me more is like the experience of life, not things that you have, but the things that you do. That's more important. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's a good question, though. Um, I got a question, though. For Demon, um, okay, so I'm in, I'm in my twenties, right? I'm, I'm gonna give you a a hypothetical. I'm in my twenties, working full time. Uh, let's say I'm like in my late twenties, I'm 26, 27, working a corporate job. Uh, let's say I'm an accountant. I know how to count money, but I don't know where to invest money, right? What should I, where should I invest my money? In? Let's say I have, uh, shit. let's say I have like 20,000 to invest. What should I do with that money? Good. Amazing question. All right. So first make sure you got your, um, make sure you got your foundation set. All right. So we talked about that emergency fund. My number personally is between five and ten thousand. Again, define define what an emergency means to you. All right. After that, um, there's there's a couple different ways for you to invest. I like stocks because it's the easiest. Right. So I'm gonna always default you to to the um, to the stock market. Um, so open up a good brokerage. I said I use public.com. Um, TD Ameritrade is amazing as well, especially if you have kids, TD Ameritrade, they have custodial accounts, so you can invest for your kids as well. All right. Um, open that up and, um, put, leave the cash position in there, right. And start learning about, um, about the different sectors of the stock market. Right. But, um, for, for a specific one, right. The S and P five hundred on average brings you, it grows your money by eight to ten percent, right annually plus dividends. Chase Bank, Bank of America, most of the big big banks, the savings account yield is like zero point zero one percent, right. So if you leave your money in there, um, and I know you've seen it in the um in the Telegram, right? I have a compound um interest calculator, so. I did it for, so I think like if you put $200 in your account and you, um, in your savings account and you keep adding 200 over 45 years, right? The Chase is the Bank of America and whatnot. They're only going to pay you $243 after 45 years to whereas the, um, the stock market, they're going to pay you millions of dollars for doing that. 
I, I would choose the million over the $245. You see what I'm saying? So I would just slowly deploy that 20,000 into the stock market, just average it in, you know? So every week, every other week, every month, put a lump sum of that in there. I wouldn't do it all at once. I would definitely spread it out. Um, and I would just keep working and keep investing. You know what I'm saying? And then as you get good, as you find even better investments than just the S&P 500, um, you'll see even greater returns on your money than that average 10%. <clears throat> Outside of that, you do some real estate, some house hacking. I'm I'm interested in doing some house hacking soon. So like, um, look for some like, some multifamily homes, right? I, I want to afford a four unit multifamily home. So I I'm live in to... one. Yeah, I live in one and I let my tenants pay the mortgage. So I'm living rent and mortgage free. I just got to worry about my utilities and whatever other expenses I have. So that's another way to invest in yourself by cutting down your expenses too. All right. So see, it's a really can... huge, I was going to say, like, I was going to say uh, housing is the biggest, probably, it probably is the biggest expense that people do have is rent or mortgage outside of like uh, car loans and student loans is that rent, you know, it's like almost 2000, maybe, you know, a little like the average is 2000. That's $2,000 cutting, you know, just like cut from your account every single month, you know, maybe, maybe not including utilities. So if you're able to cut that in half or even more or cut that even off completely, then that would be ideal, right? Personally, for me, I feel like we shouldn't even be living to live, but that's a different conversation for a different day. You know right. what I'm saying? So, <laughs> and adding yeah. on to, to what you said, right? Like, even with the house, I can say the average is like 2000 So say your mortgage is about 2000 right? And there's three other units. Had them pay 1000 or more every month now you're getting paid to live there facts you see what i'm saying so find ways to get returns on your money if you got credit card debt pay it down you're paying them dividends when you can be going you can go um get dividends you feel me so a bunch of different ways but that's the way that, that i would recommend Duman, man thank you for the knowledge thank you for for just dropping a little bit of gems where can the people find you if people in North Carolina want your services? Like what, what, where were you, where would you lead them to? I got you. So, um, hit up my socials. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in the chat. Right. So if you're on Facebook, that's me. Um, Instagram, Twitter, uh, so that's the, for that's Facebook. That. That's Demon outing. Yeah. Anything else is Demo Brando. Just like anything that. else, Demo Brando. Hit him up, man. If you've heard him today, man, you know he got some gems. Is there any last things that you want to say to the people, Demon? Um, shoot, man. If you if you were thinking about investing, stop thinking about it. Get started now. This when the economy is in in fear, when it's in a downturn like this. This is the best time to start investing. It can be scary, but if you get the information, if you build your knowledge, all right, there'll be that will increase your confidence. Go read a book on investing. You know, uh, there's so many different uh, financial like content creators out there. Find one that you like and that you agree with and learn and get in some of these master classes. A lot of these master classes are free now. You know what I'm saying? Like they'll have an offer at the end, but go get the go get the free information and take good notes and then go do your own research on it. That's how I came up. I, I got into master classes, signed up, took good notes, and then I went and dug deeper on the free gems that they gave me. So that way I didn't even have to come out of pocket. But don't be afraid to pay for some of them because it's great information. It's worth its value. Mm -hmm. Get get in the room. If you're not if you're not taking the steps to improve yourself, nothing's going to change. Shit don't change or shit don't change. Thanks. Demond, thank you for your time. Chris, Corey, y'all got anything y'all want to say to the people? We definitely going to have to do this again. 
I just want to say thank you, Damon, for, uh, you know, taking the time out of your day to come have this podcast with me and, and with us, man. It's It's been a pleasure, man. Yeah, I got to agree. I really appreciate you coming on, man. Hey, it's been What's Out Media. Thank you to Damon, uh, Crizzo, Corey. It's all good. Peace out, everybody. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and shout out to the gang, man. It's all love. Peace out, y'all. Peace, y'all. <laughs>